Well, the title of this film is Tied and Tested. Now, many of you remember the first one of those that we did, the first in that series, and that was a talk through of my go-to bottom bait, wafter, and pop-up rig that I just seem to use all the time nowadays. Well, this time around, we're gonna look at my floater setup. So we've come to this lake to try and catch one off the top, but whilst the uh, baby carp and the rudder are smashing my mixers, I thought I'd take a couple of minutes out let them hopefully fill up their tiny little bellies because I'm sure they can't get too many mixers in them and take that time out to show you how to tie my floater setup. So it's changed somewhat over the years and you know I'll be the first to admit that it does change from time to time. I don't have one monofilament that I love to use most. Ideally I would use braid but obviously the hook link is always mono and these days I tend to bounce between the cruiser mono and the carp line. I do find the cruiser mono um, is more buoyant for longer. The carp line does seem to take on a bit of water and sink a bit faster than this stuff does. So be one of those two, and this time around I'm using the Cruiser Mono in eight pound. Now don't let that deceive you because that stuff is seriously, seriously strong. And that is why I use it. So I'll talk you through how to tie it because we get loads and loads of questions with regard to rigs. Rigs is always the big thing. So this is my floater setup, this is how you tie it. So the first thing you wanna do is take six feet of your chosen hook link, like I say in this case, eight pound cruiser mono, take six feet of that. You then wanna take a size 10 mixer hook out of the packet, 10 or eight, that's what I tend to go for. And on some lakes I will sharpen them, some lakes I don't, it just depends on how big the prize is. Take the end of the cruiser mono, double it over to form a loop, pass that through the hook's eye, so you go through the back of the eye, out the front, and then with that loop, you're gonna go back round the main line, back through the loop you've then created, and you're then gonna pass your hook through the first loop that you created. It's a little bit complex, but that's the Palomar knot, and that is the knot I like to use for attaching my hook. Pull it down tight, but wet it first with saliva. It's really important to do that. A little bit of lubrication goes a long way when you're using these thin monofilaments. So nice bit of lubricant, pull it down tight, and pull both tag ends. Pull the main line and also pull the tag. I pull the tag with my teeth because it's only a small tag end. So stick it in your teeth, pull that tight as well. Once the knot is bedded down, you then want to trim the tag off with a pair of scissors. I always leave a tiny little tag. I never trim it all the way down because you just never know. If you get that tiny bit of slippage, which we hope is never going to happen, you've just got that little bit extra there just in case. It is simply for that reason. That is your hook attached. Then comes mounting the hook bait. Now, there's loads of different hook baits you can use. You can use rubber, you can use pop-ups, you can use real mixers with little grooves cut in, super glued on, and for many years, that is what I have used. But I've just got my hands on some of these hookable floaters, and they are very much what I would like from a hook bait. I've always wanted to be able to hook my mixers on, but obviously because they're hard, you can't. So with these little beauties, you can do that. You hook them straight on. Very simply, pass the hook point into the bait, carefully thread it through, and once it's popped out the other side, you'll have what looks like a rather beautiful hook bait presentation. But before I glue it, and I will glue it in a moment, it's gonna pull the eye very carefully into the bait, just to lodge it in place, just to fix it there and give it something to grab hold of, because you don't want that bait sliding around onto the shank. So pull the eye in slightly. Once that's done, you're then gonna get a little bit of super glue, and just on the bend where the hook is coming out of the bait, dab a tiny piece of super glue there, and that is just there to ensure that it doesn't move. That is your bait then mounted, and the next thing to do is pop it on the floor and let that dry for a few minutes in the sun. And whilst you do that, that's when I'll tie my float on. And whenever I get to the lake, I always tie my float on fresh. I use a 15 gram interceptor. That's pretty much my go-to. You can get to pretty much everywhere you'll ever need to get to with one of those. Obviously, if you need to step it up, you can do. And if you want to go smaller, you can also do that. But that is a nice in-between size that will generally allow you to get to where you need to be. Thread that onto your main line. So you want to put the line through the top of the tube. Don't put it through the thick end because it'd be on upside down. So through the thin tube, pass it through. It'll go through there nice and easy. Out the other end, and then you need to attach your swivel. And to attach my swivel, I use a five turn grinner knot. Very easy to tie. Line goes through the swivel, back up on itself. You form a loop, go round the main line. And every time you go round the main line, you're going through the loop you've created. So go through there five times, pull that down. Again, saliva to lubricate it, and then pull it down nice and tight. You then need to pull the swivel into the float and make sure you've got the swivel on the right way round. You need to tie it to the small end of the swivel, not the heavy ring end. 
Once that's pulled into there, you can then think about attaching your hook link you've just made to the swivel. And again, I'm using a five turn grinner knot to do that. So exactly the same process as before, but at the other end of the swivel. I always leave a long tag end, about an inch and a half, and because it's well away from the hook, you don't need to worry too much about whether or not the carp is gonna see that. And that is again, just in case of any slippage, which as I said before, you shouldn't get, but you can never be too careful. And that is about it. It's a very simple process setting up a floater rod. It couldn't get much simpler to be quite honest with you. That's my go-to presentation. And hopefully it's gonna catch me a carp today. But before I cast the rod out, I'm just gonna talk about the rod itself. So the rod I'm using is a two and three quarter Century Fatboy Slim. It's a very old rod. I've had these since I was, I don't know, 15 years old. They were two and three quarters when I got them. They're much softer than that now. And that's nice when you float a fish in. The reel, that is a Daiwa SS2600 whisker. Loads of people use these for floater fishing. And I've loaded it up with 10 pound cruiser on it. So a slightly heavier breaking strain than what I'm using for the hook link. Now, one thing I will point out is, if you're fishing a weedy lake for big carp, this isn't what I tend to use these days. I use a heavier rod and a bigger reel. The one thing with these reels is, you don't gain a lot of line. You know, one of those turns on that is nowhere near as much as a big pit reel. So if you're fishing for big carp in a weedy lake and you need to gain line rapidly, a tiny little reel and a soft rod probably isn't the best way to go. So weigh it up, work out what you need from your rod and reel setup, and the same for your hook links. You know, if it's savage weedy, step your line up. Obviously this eight pound line, I've said it's nice and strong, but you know, massive carp in very weedy lakes, an eight pound hook link probably isn't the one. So think very carefully about your main line, your hook link, the rod and the reel before you go float a fishing. But for what I've got in front of me now, this is absolutely perfect. And that is how you tie my floater set up. One thing to do now, catch a carp on it. One thing you can do if you're having problems with your line sinking is add some line grease. Now some people use Vaseline, but I use a product called Mucilin. My old man showed me it many, many years ago. He never carp fished that much, but he did a lot of floater fishing and he used to tell me all the time, make sure you grease your line. And quite simply, it will help with the buoyancy. So if you're line sinking, add a little bit of grease. Well, the plan was put loads of bait out and then just tweak the mixer back through the small fish into the path of a bigger one. And it has worked. And we've hooked a mirror. I can see these big old scales. Looks a mega carp. Just got to get him in. Right, well, he's not far out now. He's a lovely little fish. Big old scales all over him. Oh, he's beautiful. What does he have to do now? <sighs> Man, his dorsal again. Why does it do that? Yay! What an awesome little carp. That's what we come for. I thought I was gonna get plagued by those little ones all day. Thank you, carp gods. Well, the hook's come out in a minute. 